Alrighty, good afternoon everybody and welcome to the Top Producer Show. My name is Brandy and this is Jeff and the whole purpose of this show is to show you what it takes to become a top producer. Now this is mainly geared towards network marketing, however all the methods that we use are in network marketing are also used with our traditional businesses. So um, if you're in anything else that has to do with sales and recruiting, this will also help you as well. So anywho, we are going over the book Atomic Habits by James Clear. And we're on chapter 10 today, how to fix, find and fix the causes of your bad habits. So where cravings come from. So the other day, Jeff and I were talking about where we're going to go get lunch. And I was like, I want to go get tacos. So if you were to ask me why I wanted to eat tacos, I wouldn't say because I need to eat food to survive, even though that is the underlying if, if that is what the need is uh, uh, deep down. But the motivation is to just, uh, I'm motivated to eat tacos because I have to eat. To I'm not motivated just because I have to eat to survive, even though that's what I'm craving. So underlying motives include to conserve energy, obtain food and water, find love and reproduce, connect and bond with others, win social acceptance and approval, reduce uncertainty and achieve status and prestige. So cravings, craving, it's <laughs> craving. Yeah, how did I write this? Hold on. So cravings are just a, a specific manifestation of a deeper underlying motive. So it kind of comes back to the basic human needs, food, water, shelter, safety, and security, and so on. So if you look at any product that is a habit forming, you'll see that it, do, it does not create a new motivation. Rather, it latches on to one of those um, underlying motives of human nature. So we're always going to be looking at that. Now... Your habits are modern day solutions to ancient desires. The underlying motives behind human desire remain the same. So you can always attach some type of habit to what is the need. Now, there are many different ways to address the same underlying motive. One person can look at the <coughs> same motive and do it a little bit differently. One person who, yeah, like one person's way of relieving stress might be to smoke a cigarette. Another person's way of relieving stress may be to go for a run. It's the same motive, but it's just handled differently by different people. Now, which uh, the smoking one is obviously the bad habit, so everybody can handle it a little bit differently. Everybody has a different viewpoint. So what you have to do is when you recognize it, be like, okay, this is the trigger. Like, I have to find a different way to deal with the stress and yeah, fulfill that need. So your current habits may not necessarily be the best way to solve a problem you face, uh, but they are methods, but they are just the methods uh, that you've learned to use over time. So like uh, the way that we grew up with our parents, who we were around in school and uh, our families, they are who teach us what, yeah, what those cues are going to be and then how we're going to react to them. So once you associate a solution with a problem you need to solve, you keep coming back to it. So habits are all about associations. So these associations determine whether you predict a habit to be worth repeating or not. So as we covered in our uh, discussion on the first law in this book, your brain is constantly absorbing information and noticing the cues of your environment. So every time you perceive a cue, your brain runs a stimulation and a prediction of whether or not, uh, what that should do in the next moment. So as an example, the cue, you notice that the stove is hot. And then the prediction is, is if I touch it, I'm gonna get burnt. So I should probably not touch it. So that's an example of that. So our behavior is heavily dependent on those predictions. So two people can look at the same cue and have different reactions. The same cue can spark a good habit or a bad habit, depending on what is your prediction and the causes 
and the cause of your habits is actually the prediction that precedes them. So a craving is a sense that something is missing and this gap between your current state and your desired state provides the reaction to act. So when you're looking at any bad habits and what you're trying to do in your business, you gotta be able to recognize what is the triggers, what is the habits that you have currently and how do you need to reassociate it to get you to where you need to be. Now, a lot of people have stuff that they need to work on. Like they're, that's why we have this show. We wanted to get into better habits of reading every day. And we noticed our production every day, whenever we started with this, it just affected the entire day. So like, you gotta look at like, how are you gonna start your day to make sure that you're getting the best results throughout the, uh, the rest of the day. And then we're gonna go into how to program your brain to enjoy the hard habits. So Jeff, I'm actually gonna turn that part over to you, but do you have anything to say about the first part I went over? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> when, I, when I'm taking notes now, I'm kind of like writing this out for the show versus taking notes um, kind of like a book report. Because um, most of the time I'm taking notes like a book report, but now that I'm reading this to actually get it out there, I just, I write it like as I kind of, um, I'm gonna talk. So what I got out of how to find habits and fix of the cause of your bad habits is, is, you know, identify where cravings come from is, you know, the obvious. Uh, craving is a, a specific manifestation of a deeper underlying motive. Um, <clears throat> at a deep level, you simply wanna reduce uncertainty and relieve anxiety, acceptance and approval. We talked about that earlier this week in the herd mentality um, we're always seeking other people's approval, right? Um, your habits are modern day solution to ancient desires. So the idea to live indoors was because when people lived outside, they got to eat. Let's, let's, you know, be realistic. Um, the idea of wanting to sleep next to the fire is people realized, hey, you don't freeze to death. Hey, you know, fire keeps away certain animals. So if you sleep next to the fire, um, you're more likely to live. So certain habits make a lot of sense, right? But how do you set yourself up in business like this? Um, you are endlessly predicting what will happen in the next moment. So because of all the input, you're, you're endlessly predicting what will happen. The problem with that is, is if you grew up and you were told you've got to sell Girl Scout cookies, or you were told you got to sell popcorn for the Boy Scouts, or you were told through your school you got to sell candy bars or have to sell something, and you had a bad experience then, what happens is, is you linked sales to this bad experience. So now every time somebody's like, hey, all you have to do is sell, you're like, yes, I see it, I can do it. But when you go out to do it, in your subconscious mind, you're predicting that if you have this conversation with somebody, they're going to reject you. If you have this conversation with somebody, this is what they're going to say. And then I'm going to say this, and then they're going to say this, and then I'm going to say this. You know, especially when recruiting, this happens a lot. Um, because you've had weird experiences, maybe with family or at school, um, a book report, whatever. It, it was a traumatic emotional experience. And now you're replaying that and predicting that the same thing's going to happen. Um, and the reason I know that is because that's where I was when I first started and didn't know what to say and what to do. Um, your current habits are not necessarily the best way to solve problems. Brandy talked about this. Um, they're just methods that you learn to use. Most of us learn to cope with stuff we don't like. It doesn't mean it's the right way to deal with it. It's just how we figured out how to cope with it so it didn't destroy us. But you're endlessly predicting what will happen in every next moment. All actions are based on the idea. All actions are based on the idea what you really want is to feel different. That's what you're going after. It's a state change. You want to change from anxiety to relaxation. You want to change, you know, because a lot of people, this is why we put stuff off. You know, hey, I need, I mean, it's April 15th, so we can talk about it. Hey, I need to do my taxes. But instead, let's watch Lord of the Rings. You know, oh, I need to do my taxes, but The Hobbit's on. Oh, I need to do my taxes, but The Matrix is playing. Um, or whatever your show is, you, you, you dive into that instead of doing the work, right? So how do you reprogram your brain, um, especially on the hard habits? You have to make habits more attractive. Um, and if you can learn to associate them with positive experiences, positive experiences. So <clears throat> for instance, 
if you need to contact a bunch of people, is there a reward at the end of contacting these people? Something you like doing. Now, it could be a meal. It could be a treat. It could be, you know, it's dumb as it sounds. It's like chocolate, you know. How do you get animals to jump through hoops? You give them a treat at the end. Funny enough, humans are the same way. <clears throat> In fact, you can train anybody to do anything using the same technique. Not saying you should. I'm not saying you should. Don't do the Sheldon Cooper off of the Big Bang Theory with Penny saying. giving him <laughs> giving her chocolate every time. But actually, that's good. exactly <laughs> what we're talking about. It works. Um, and it, it's crazy. Um, it's called conditioned response, by the way, in psychology. Um, <laughs> if you get if you get instead if you go from you get to do something instead of you have to do something. It's a reframing. It helps. It doesn't solve the problem. Hey, I get to contact versus I have to contact. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really help because if you're scared and you have the emotion, getting to versus having to doesn't fix the issue. But if I do this, I get what I want. Now, all of a sudden, it's a totally different thing. Um, and by the way, whatever you have to do, whatever you have to do, that you don't like doing, whatever whatever's the most profitable thing to do that you don't like doing, you need to do that first before you do everything else. Because if anxiety is here, you know, straight up, and you do that, then anxiety goes down the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. So I've always found contacting people first is always best. Um, getting in the right frame of mind, you know, doing this show, exercising, you know, energy drink, vitamins, you know, slap in the face, cold water. I mean, whatever you need to trigger the ability to go do that. So I get to go to work versus I have to go to work. Yeah, it's a little bit different of a feeling. It's it's kind of a play on words. I mean, you can say it all day long, but um, I don't know how well that's going to work for you. Um, exercising, you know, expending energy and time versus getting energy and time. Hey, if I work out, I feel better. If I, if I work out, I get more energy. And you're like, that's not true. Well, it's not true the first time you work out because you haven't done it forever. But it's a habit that if you build, you actually develop more and more energy. It's actually proven. The more energy you expel, the more energy you get. Um, obviously, because if it didn't work like that, then runners would be the laziest ass people in the world, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's pretty easy to understand. Finance, saving money means sacrificing and giving up. Ooh, that one's good, right? Saving money means sacrificing and giving up. Versus how can you reword that? Saving money creates security and allows me to do things nobody else can do. It's a different way. Like It is a different way to look at it. And you can use this for meditation. You can use this for nervousness. You can use this for anxiety. Reframe it, reword it. That's part of it. The key to finding and fixing causes of your bad habits is to reframe the association you have about them. It's not easy. And if you can reprogram your predictions, you can transform a hard habit into an attractive one. I think this is kind of horse crap. Um, you know, it's, it's colorful horse crap. But it, what really has to happen is, is there is a subconscious, you have a subconscious and your subconscious is pre-programmed and it's very hard to overcome your subconscious because you're just going to naturally do things and you're going to naturally do things and you don't know why. What you're trying to avoid is some bad feeling in the, in the, like if you go all the way down to the very bottom, you feel that if you do this, it's a bad feeling. So you have to change that. Um, Tony Robbins talks about a state change. You can actually change it in a moment's time because the moment your state changes, you're changed. The moment your state changes, you feel different about certain things. This is why getting around people who are successful is so important. For instance, if two people start in business, but one has success habits and the other one doesn't, the person who has success habits, indirect sales, network marketing, um, MLM, they'll go out and make these calls. They'll go out and do the work. And if you're around that person, what happens is, is typically you'll pick up that vibration, right? David Robertson knows this. You'll pick up that vibration of that person. That person's contacting. That person's talking to people. That person's recruiting. We recruited another person last night at midnight. It, it, if you're around the people who do it consistently, all of a sudden your activity picks up. Why? Because if you're like Dave and myself and Brandy, you're competitive. You, you wanna, you're like, I'm going to do it too. So now all of a sudden you take a 
something you might be avoiding, not that Dave's avoiding it, but like some people would avoid it because it's a bad feeling to go out and recruit or I'm tired or, you know, all these different things. Now all of a sudden, because you're in an environment of success and you're around people who are actually doing it, now all of a sudden, boom, it works. Facebook is making your voice so sound deeper. Ah. Like Tony Robbins. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe I've just been working on it and I'm going to be on radio soon. I don't know, um, which would be kind of cool. So that's what you're trying to do. If you get around successful people, what happens is the habits change so much faster. It was one of the key things that um, I pulled up yesterday, or maybe I read a day ago. Oh, human laws, at least effort. Okay, so that's actually I'm a couple chapters ahead. Um, in this book, but there's a, there's a really key phrase that says, you know, who you're around, your environment. Actually, that was from yesterday. It's your environment of the people you're around will heavily influence that herd mentality. So it says, if you want to develop a certain habit, get around people who already have that habit. If it's contacting, get around people who contact. This is why getting around successful people in network marketing, direct sales, I hate, and I think it's incorrect. They're like, find a workout partner. But most people will find a workout partner who are who's newer or knows less than they do. How is that going to help you? It's like it's like, hey, we need to find somebody who has directions to get us to the event, and nobody has directions. And I know what you're going to say. Well, why don't you just type it into your computer? This is pre-computer. You had to go around somebody who knew the directions to be able to get there. Because uh, most people couldn't read a map either, you know. Uh, back in the day, you had to read a map, and then you had to read another map. I went to the point where I had to have three maps to get somewhere. You know, that's when you're going out of state, out of state, out of state. Or you can get one of those trip ticks from um, AAA. That was always fun. You follow page by page the little line that goes down, and then they have like a huge circle in construction, and you're freaking out. Um, <laughs> but they were right on every time, right? So... That's basically identifying bad habits. Um, if you're not doing something, that's a bad habit. If you're, if you're avoiding it. Now, the problem is, is even seeing that you're avoiding it. Because a lot of times, you'll think you're working on it, right? Because you're like, well, I'm trying to find the best way. Well, I'm trying to find the best leads. Well, I'm trying to find the best contact. Well, I'm trying to find this. If you're not doing anything, if you're not contacting, if you're not recruiting, you've developed some kind of block. And usually it's not a block with knowing how to do this stuff. You know how to contact, you know how to invite, you know how to, most likely, you know these things. What you're missing is it's a belief issue. Um, and if you think the industry is good and if you think the company's good, if you think the product's good and it goes all the way down, then the only common denominator here is, is there's a belief that you have that you shouldn't do it. It shouldn't be you. Why? Because of something you did in the past. You know, that was a big one for me. Something I did in the past or, uh, you know, my, my programming from my family, my parents. Hey, I'm not the ideal person. I mean, I had all the excuses. I was too young at one point that I was like, well, maybe, maybe I'm not too young, but I'm too inexperienced. Maybe I'm, okay, so now I'm older and I have experience, but I don't have the education. Now I'm older and experienced and have the education, but I don't have this. And it was constantly what I didn't have. Until I kind of listen to enough, and this is why they say go back to the meetings, go back to the meetings, go back to the meetings, and that's a good habit to make, um, is eventually I got around enough people, and this is what people do not understand about the event. They're like, I already know it, why do I have to show up? You, it's not for you. It's for all the people you're going to bring in who don't believe. Don't believe in the industry, don't believe in the company, don't believe in the product, but the main thing is they don't believe in themselves. They don't believe in themselves. And until you fix that, none of the other stuff will ever work. No matter what company you're in. And this is why people switch from company to company to company to company to company, to company product to product to product to product to product. They don't believe in themselves. They're thinking, if I just find the right company, if I just find the right product, it's got to have this comp plan so that way it's horse crap. You could have built anything. You could have sold used toothpicks and made more money than what most people make in direct sales, you could have sold used dental floss. You would have gotten farther because the technique of selling and recruiting, and like, if you know that, that's not what's stopping you. It's a belief that you should have it. It's a belief of worthiness. And until you overcome that, it doesn't matter what company. So, mm -hmm. and I was there, I did that. I thought, well, the reason I didn't succeed here was because of they didn't have this or they didn't have the system or they didn't have whatever. Eventually, I figured out 
that it was me. It was me. So that's why Jim Rohn says work harder on yourself than you do on your job, which, or business, you know, in, in our case. So that's what we have tomorrow is Saturday. So we won't be here, okay. meaning online, um, at least for this. But what we will do, what we will do is, and what's funny is, is I just had an experience with this whole bad habit thing. Um, I had created, sorry to segue there. I had created a bunch of YouTube videos and I've been delaying putting out the YouTube videos. Um, the first reason I delayed to put out the YouTube videos is because I didn't have the proper call to action. I was like, I need to have the right call to action. It has to be perfect. And what I did is I drew out this whole fucking crazy chart of I'm going to send them here and then I'm going to get their email and then I'm going to ask for their blood type and then I'm going to get their phone number and then I'm going to ask where they got married. And it was just all this bullshit. And what I was doing is I was just confusing myself and making an excuse to actually get started. Mm -hmm. eventually i came up i said the call to action is supposed to be simple and easy i said what are we trying to do we're trying to build i mean it's the very first thing in our mission statement we're trying to build a community of entrepreneurs i was like well if we're trying to build a community of entrepreneurs i need to send them right to the community so they can join and i can put them in the facebook group mm -hmm. i was like but then what about an incentive? Why not a carrot? Why not give them a prize? So then I was like, well, if you go and register, then I'm going to give you free leads. And I was like, well, that, that, that's attractive. That makes sense. That's what people are looking for. I'm like, boom, I hit the nail right on the center. Like it was perfect. And it was like, and it's already built. So now I don't need to go to get response. I don't need to go get a landing page. I don't need to create a funnel system. I don't need to create a new CRM. I don't need it because all this bullshit is what we always do, right? We're like, well, we need a CRM and we need this and we need a drop down menu. And then we're going to need something that flips them over to this. And then we're going to need to film a video and this and the thing. The, re the reality is you're never going to complete any of that ever. I mean, unless you're like a big company, right? And I'm not trying to trick people in, I'm trying to attract people in. So I'm like, well, that makes sense. Hey, join our community. If you want information like this, if you want to learn how to get leads, if you want to learn what to say, if you want to learn what to do with the people who aren't doing anything on your team, if you want to learn why that's a good thing, come to our community. And that's what I did is I put together kind of a simple PowerPoint of here's my introduction. I had already written it. I had already written my introduction, but I was stalling on it. I went and found it, copy, paste, boom. Now I have my introduction. Then I'm like a list of questions. I'm like, I'd already written a list of questions. So I go into my phone and there's over 50 questions. Questions like, how do I recruit my friends, family, and acquaintances? Questions like, why should I hire a coach in network marketing? I had already written all these questions and I already had the answers. These were stuff I already knew, but I was missing that call to action. So then I get the call to action and I'm like, I know like where we're gonna lead people. And I start building it out. Well, what's really interesting is I was watching, and this is why you always want to plug in to kind of hire people who have, who have done more. I plug into this guy who had done over $200 million in sales online. Very similar like structure that we had. It was an affiliate program. Um, and he said something really interesting. He goes, you know, one of, and I've, I've read this book, The 48 Laws of Power. One of the, one of the key points in The 48 Laws of Power, one of the 48, um, is complete everything to the end. See it through to the end. Meaning before you start it, see a person getting in, going through your recruiting process, actually signing up, and then what you're going to do with them to get them in, get them going, and all the way up to whatever level, ring earner, 100,000, 50,000, whatever you think is successful in the business. By the way, until somebody is making more in network marketing than they are in their full-time job, they're not really ever going to be full-time. What I mean by that is, is people will always defend their greatest income. Mm -hmm. And that's one to write down. People will always defend their greatest income. So the moment if their job questions their business, if their home life questions their business, if anything questions their business and it is not the main income, people will always defame the main income over the side income, which is why most people never have any security inside of direct sales and network marketing because they're running around talking to people about making three to $500 a month. 
if you're talking to people about just making an extra three to five hundred dollars a month that's not going to create financial security that's not going to create a good feeling that's not going to create the basics being sold that's not going to create shit so you're selling i always know you're selling the wrong thing if you're selling three to five hundred dollars a month mm -hmm. or six hundred dollars a month or even a thousand dollars a month is thousand dollars a month is like okay you can make your car payment you can almost make i mean in indiana you can make rent in a lot of cases or at least close to it um but it's not enough to overcome all the fear anxiety and blah 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 because you're like why would i do all this work like this is hard work hard work hard work has to be related to something that is reward Three to five hundred dollars, like I, I'll just work extra hours. Why would I want to go through all the pain, suffering, friendship, cutoffs, breakoffs, rejection? Why would I want to do that? So I had this problem with doing the YouTube videos. I solved the introduction, I solved the question, I solved the answer, I solved the call to action, then I'm still stalling. And I'm like, but why? Because I had developed a bad habit of then I thought, well, this is going to be out there to everybody. Like if I put it on YouTube and I, I do all the keywords and stuff, it's going to be out there to everybody. What happens if, you know, and I was going through the rejection thing. What happens if this person sees it and that person sees it? And then I realized, who is this video actually targeted at? Mm -hmm. It's targeted at people who have been in six months or more, six months or more, who are depressed, who are discouraged, who are at the brink of quitting who are pissed off at the industry and they're actually searching for a better way to do things, right? They're searching for a way to not have to spam people on Facebook. They're searching for a way to not have to face rejection. They're searching for a way to not have to talk to friends, family, and acquaintances. And if I can provide that information, I'm gonna find people like that who actually need the help. Now, how many people need the help? We already know there's 125 million people in the world who are involved in direct sales, and one third of them got in to make money. That's about 41 million people. It's 41 million people who are looking. So if you can put out content in front of them and bring them in. So Dave Wood had this uh, list of 12, which is now in my phone. But he's like, you have to see things through to the end. And when I finally drew it all out and made that connection, I was like, boom. And I said, yes, sir. I said, well, I also need a reward, right? Because, you know, just doing more work to do more work, it's like, what is the reward? And yeah, I know the reward is, what's funny is I know the reward's money. I know the reward would be signups. I know the rewards would be a community. But to me like accomplishing like personal goals overrides the the better of everything else it just overrides i don't know it's like a personal mission to beat the living crap out of all the competitors like it just i think that's what grant constantly talks about too and it's it's and gary vanderchuk it's playing the game right it's playing the game so i wrote down how fast can i get 10 videos together how fast can I get 25 videos together, 50 videos, 100 videos? And then I was like 100, 200, 300. And I'm like, every time I hit one of these increments, I'm going to put it out on social media. I just accomplished 10 videos. Well, the question becomes, what are the 10 videos? And then people go look at it. Hey, I just hit 25 videos. What are the 25 videos about? People will be interested to go look at it. I just hit 50 videos. I just hit 100 videos. More and more people are going to start looking at it. As more and more people start seeing the numbers escalate, what does that do for people looking at you as an authority, an expert, and somebody they want to listen to? It's going to go up. It's going to go up. By the way, the average channel never makes it to 10 videos. The average channel on, on YouTube never makes it to 10 videos. I think the average channel has like three videos, and then people quit because it didn't produce what they wanted it to produce. In three videos, people had already given up and said, hey, this habit is not worth it. Meanwhile, watching a guy yesterday who didn't turn on the monetization until he passed about, what do you say, 50 million? I mean, he had stupid amount of followers. He turns it on his first month at six grand. His next month is 16 grand. His next month is 60 grand a month, all from YouTube. 
he wasn't even making money. The point was not to make money with YouTube. It was to build this other business. So that's what I got for today. Um, if you need information like this, um, if you're looking for leads, if you're trying to figure out what to say and how to say it, go to Join My Leadership Network. Underneath the video, there is a box that says Join Now. Join Now, fill out that form, put all your information in, click the button that says Join, and you'll be in our system. You do not have to buy anything, but you'll be in our system, in our community. I'll bring you over to our community page so you can start seeing what's going on. You'll see videos like this. You'll get help. You'll get information, and we're going to give you some leads. Yep. And also, all these videos will be uploaded to YouTube, so that way, if you guys want to go back, Rewatch, take some notes you are more than welcome to also we do have an instagram and a tiktok page so jeff is going to be taking uh, he mentioned making the 25 videos 50 videos and 100 videos and what he's going to do is he's going to split some of them and post them on all these other places so that way you guys can get those as well so you want to make sure that you go follow uh, my leadership network on Instagram and on TikTok because we are going to be posting some content there. Now, we are here Monday through Friday, every day at noon. So if you guys would like to join us, put it in your little calendar to send you a reminder. That way you guys can join us here. And we will see you guys on Monday. And have a happy Easter this weekend. And we will see you then. Happy Easter.